himself that he left behind. And joining us now is uh, Senator, he's with Homeland Security and Government Affairs uh, Committee member. But Senator, just out of your expertise for a second, just from your observation, how's the president done so far? What do you, how do you think he's being viewed? You know, I think it's been a good first trip. I think that uh, trying to unify those in the Middle East to know that it is largely their responsibility to wipe out uh, Islamic terrorism over there, I think is a good sign. Now, I'm not a real big fan of um, selling so many weapons to Saudi Arabia because, unfortunately, some of those weapons in the past few years have wound up in the hands of ISIS because Saudi Arabia really has been indiscriminate in who they've armed. So I am a little concerned about giving so many weapons and selling so many weapons to Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of concern, something you've been worried about, and you've spoken out, uh, about this extensively, is how the government spies on us. And in fact, there's a circus story. I'm going to just read the first paragraph of it for you in just a second. As soon I did it this way, uh -oh. I did it the hard way. Uh, the national, the NSA, under former President Barack Obama, routinely violated American privacy protections while scouring through overseas intercepts and failed to disclose the extent of the problems until the final days before Donald Trump was elected president last fall, according to once top secret documents that chronicle some of the most serious constitutional abuses to date by the U.S. intel community. This uh, dates back to 2011. And here's another headline report. Obama era NSA admits to years of illegal searches on Americans. Yeah, see, I've been concerned about this for a long time mm -hmm. and realize this is not just a few people. You think it's only people that are calling a foreign leader or a foreign person that are being picked up? If you mention a foreign person in your conversation or in your email, so if anybody mentions the name Assad in an email, it's being gathered up. And so it isn't just communications with Assad, it's communications about Assad. So we're talking about millions and millions of phone calls and emails that are being gathered up and then being searched with no sort of control over the privacy of the American. Sure. We call this a backdoor way to sort of get at Americans' privacy without using a warrant, and I think it's a terrible program. Senator, explain, if you will, for uh, people who uh, just over their coffee, just uh, their jaws just dropped. So if you're talking on the telephone and you mention Assad or you mention some other one of the words that uh, is in the matrix that they're searching for, that will, there's then, uh, you know, a red flashing light on that phone call? Yeah, and realize it's it's not the old-fashioned wiretap where they've tapped your phone. There's a huge cable going transatlantic, or there's a way station where they're being <clears> transmitted <throat> by satellite. Everything's being sucked up. So if you can imagine millions of things going through the Internet across the sea or across the continent to another continent, millions and millions of Internet transmissions all being soaked up based on a keyword. So Americans get caught up in that, and I would say 99.9% wow. .9 of Americans are are innocent. I'm all for going after people, even Americans, if you have evidence and you present it to a judge, but we shouldn't suck up everybody's phone calls and everybody's internet right. transmission. And the danger is, and one of the accusations of Susan Rice and others, is that they were looking at this information politically, searching right. opponents and going after people well, in the Trump uh, transition to try to bring them down. And maybe even you, so uh, when you were a candidate. So I want to bring you to this. I know how you guys like to do and uh, like to do ask questions even if these guys can't answer it you try to make your point in these hearings with the question and I think I picked up that with Trey Gowdy yesterday in this question to John Brennan he asked him flat out in your last days not the not the one that's in the prompter now but the other one in your last days uh, what did you do in terms of unmasking listen to this and tell me if you know what he's getting at have you ever requested that a U.S. person's name be unmasked? Yes, I have. Do you recall any U.S. ambassadors asking that names be unmasked? I don't. I don't know. Maybe it's ringing a vague bell, but I'm not. I could not answer with any confidence. On that. Do you remember what your last day on the job was at the CIA? What was it, the date? It was noon on January 20th when I gave up my responsibility as director of CIA. On, ad, on either January 19th or up till noon on January the 20th, did you make any unmasking request? I do not believe I did. What's he getting at, Senator? <laughs> Well, see, I think the concern is, and I don't have enough information to tell you one way or another, but my assumption would be that they do know somebody was being unmasked in the last couple of days and that there was this sort of frantic uh, 
you know, commotion with the with the Obama administration trying to get at as many things as they could as, on, as they could on the way out. If this becomes, if, if we can determine this to be true, this is an amazing abuse of power, and it dwarfs any of the other sort of made up stuff that we're looking into now. If the Obama administration was going after and targeting people of the Trump transition or others politically, this is an enormous right. story, and it will dwarf all right. the other stories. Senator, when you Senator, I know Trey. Gets to the point we know Trey Gaddy, and he's as straight as an arrow and a great prosecutor, he wouldn't have asked that question unless he knew something. My guess is they know some ambassador was asking, and they wanted to know if it was Brennan doing the work for him. But see, there's going to be dozens of other people, and unfortunately, there may be hundreds of people. And what a lot of people don't realize is that most of the information comes in initially. If it's coming into the NSA or the FBI, it is already unmasked. It only gets masked when it's sent to other people. So there are hundreds and hundreds of people. So, for example, who unmasked Flynn? Maybe it was before it even got masked. Maybe it was, and that was a domestic conversation. So probably that was the FBI listening. Do you have some people in the FBI who were loyal to the Obama administration or enemies of Trump who decided then to call up Susan Rice and say, mm -hmm. hey, do you, maybe you need to unmask mask uh, this particular transmission because we think Flynn was talking to the Russian, uh, you know, foreign minister. So there's a lot of problems here with having so much power to listen to conversations and that power can be abused. There's got to be amazing oversight on it. And some of these phone calls, frankly, we just shouldn't be listening to. No kidding. All right. Senator Rand Paul, thank you for joining us. Thank you. ISIS really